All right. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing out here today? All right. Are we awake or are we just taking a rest? Place to sit down. Yep. All right. Well, I am Sergeant Tom Barton. I am the Division Diving Officer from Albany, New York, and Division Headquarters. And this is the Underwater Recovery Team Dive Demonstration. And it happens to be the last show of the fair. So welcome. We're happy backstage, I'll tell you that. All right. Now, what we're going to do for you here today is we're going to give you a quick demonstration, some of the equipment that we use, how we use it, and a little bit about our team. Now, it announced this as, a, as the scuba demonstration. Now, scuba is actually just one piece of equipment that we use on the underwater recovery team to do our job. Scuba actually isn't even a word, it's an acronym. Does anybody know what that stands for? Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. Correct. Now, when we started this team back in 1932, we've been around for 85 years. We are the oldest and largest public safety dive team in the entire country. Now, back in 1932, we actually used surface-supplied air. We used those heavy Mark V helmets, heavy canvas suits, and sled shoes, kind of clomped around on the bottom. We were tethered to the surface with our surface-supplied air hose. It's a very difficult way to do any underwater searching. Now, in 1942, an individual developed scuba. Do you know who that is? Jack Rousteau. Jack Rousteau, correct. Invented scuba, 1942. We adopted it to our program right around 1956. State police is a little slow on the uptake, a little behind the times. We did adopt it, and when we did, that freed us from that surface supply air tether, and it kind of gave us much more freedom of motion and made our searches much easier to do. Now, before I continue and introduce the stars of the show, if there's any kids in the audience who want to come down to get a front row seat, you can right, get right by the tank. Come on down now. We'll get set up, and we'll get going. Come on in. Come right under that. Come right under that rope. There's no electricity in that rope. I promise. Sit right here. Sit right behind me. Get about here. Have a seat so they can see behind you. Sit right down. Sit. You guys see the canine show? Sit. <laughs> stars of the show. I can direct your attention to the top of the tank. First up, from Troop C, the senior diver and team leader, Trooper Neil Case. And next up, his much shorter counterpart from here in Troop D, up in the Black Sky area, Trooper Josh Cross. And last but certainly not least, your hometown hero from here in Syracuse, the Troop D team leader, Trooper Greg Ebro. Right. right. Well, these are the guys who are going to do the work for you here today. Show off a little bit. First thing we're going to do is we're going to get Josh into some scuba gear up there and get him in the tank. Now, we're going to have a little fun with Josh. Josh is one of the newest members of our team. He came on about two years ago. So we're going to see how fast he can get his gear on up there. We're going to time him. Anybody have a timer down here? You have a phone with a stopwatch on it? Or... There you go, right there. Right over here. Step right over here. All right. What's your name? Brianna, where are you from? Utica. Okay, I like Utica. Now, have you been here at the fair all day long? Yes? What's your favorite part of the fair so far, you see? The rides. <laughs> you sure about that? Are you really sure? Or this? Nice, nice comeback. I don't think you're All right, you see Josh up there? Okay. We're going to get him a countdown, and if you're, when I say go, you're going to start that little clock. You ready? Josh, you ready up there? Okay, ready? Three, two, one! What's the matter? You said he's one of the new guys on the team? Yeah, that's right. I just think maybe we should make a little hard run. What do you guys think? 
What do you got, Mike? I'm just gonna throw it in. Have him get dressed underwater. Yeah. What do you think? He said no. He said no. He says no? Do we, since when do we listen to Josh? <laughs> Should I throw it in the water? Yeah. There you go. There you go. There it goes. Now, how long do you think it's going to take him to put on all that equipment? Ten minutes? All right. Ten minutes. All right. Hold your breath. Dive down. Put all that gear on. Ten minutes. Ready? Okay. Neil, get him in a walk. Ready? Reset that. Hundreds of people here, and I'm seriously the only one counting. Is he ready? I say go. Okay, ready? Come on. Three, two, one, go! Batman used to get dressed way faster than that. Okay, as soon as he puts his hands up, you will be okay. There you go. Stop it. Right. What do you got? 25 seconds, Josh. All right. Well done. Wow, thanks very much for helping me out. 25 seconds. The state government. There. His state fair record is actually 15 a couple days ago. 15 seconds he did that. Yeah, he's tired. We're all tired. All right, now Josh is going to swim around a little bit in there, show you that freedom of movement that I talked about. He's also going to show you what any diver wants to accomplish, and that is whether you're a recreational diver or a public safety diver like we are, and that's called neutral buoyancy. That's neither rising or falling in the water column. If he has a weight held on, it'll take him to the bottom of that tank. But he's also wearing a buoyancy compensator vest that he can actually take air out of his tank, put it into that vest, and it makes him float off the bottom. Now the trick to it is to put just enough air in it to float him off the bottom, but not enough to float him to the surface. Now, like I said, Josh just joined the team two years ago, but he's actually been diving for a long time. He's a certified open water instructor. He is part of the instructor staff for the underwater recovery team, as is Greg and Neil. He's got a lot of time in the water, and these guys have perfected a lot of the skills that are going to make it easy for you today. Now we're going to add Neil to the mix. He's going to do an elevated entry for you. you see Josh get out of his way, which is pretty smart. Neil's coming in regardless. You tell him to the elbow drop. <laughs> Flashes just keep getting bigger, I'm going to tell you right now. Now we train all of our own divers on our team, right from non-divers up through their open water training and into their public safety dive training. Our course is eight weeks long. We have a week-long uh, pre-selection process that we can test the guys and take just the best uh, members onto our team. Once we go get into our school, we have about a 40% washout rate. In other words, four out of every ten students that enter our school will ask to be leave, ask to leave before they graduate. Our school is based after the Navy Dive School. It's very uh, trying, it's very demanding, and uh, not a lot of people can actually make it through. So they're going to show you a couple things that we teach in our basic novice school. The first three weeks of which is designed for open water scuba training. The first thing is going to be buddy breathing simply air sharing. If one of their pieces of equipment should fail and they're unable to get air out of their system, they can go to their partner, breathe off of his system until they fix the problem or they get out of trouble. Next thing they're gonna show you is a simple mask clearing technique. The mask should get dislodged from our face down there. They can put it out back on their face and to get the water out, they're gonna put the, pull the bottom of the mask away from their face, they'll exhale through their nose and the air going into their mask will actually drain the water right out of the bottom and put the mask back on their face so they can continue with their dive without going to the surface. Our divers are taught to fix any problem they have at the bottom 
We're diving sometimes up to 130 feet underwater. We can't always go to the top and fix any problem we have. Uh, next thing we're going to do is a ditch and don drill. This is something that we also go through in the novice school. That's simply ditch. Neil's going to take his gear off. He's going to leave it at the bottom of the tank. He's going to go to the surface. He's going to take one breath. He's going to go back down. He's going to put his gear back on. He's going to don it underwater. Now you notice when he went to the surface, he was exhaling all the way, blowing those bubbles out. The reason for that is that that's compressed air that he's breathing at the bottom out of that tank. If he were to take a breath of that compressed air at the bottom of this 50 foot tank, and hold his breath, and go to the surface, that air would expand in his lungs quite a bit. If he doesn't expel it, he could actually pass an air bubble from his lungs into his bloodstream and he would embolize. And embolism is one of the uh, dangers of scuba diving. Oh, he's back down. He's back down at the bottom. He's going to put his gear back on. Now, in the novice school, this is a timed event. It's one of those events that if the student is not uh, cannot complete, we ask him to leave. And there you go. All right. The ditch and dive. Good job. Now they're going to show you a piece of equipment that we use for transportation under the water. This is the use of our diver propulsion vehicle or a DPV, also known as underwater scooter. Don't try this at home, these guys are trained professionally. Looks like we made it through, this, through the state fair with only one head-on collision. That was the first day. Now the divers would use this in the case of their search patterns, they actually put it ways offshore. They can grab one of these DPVs, ride it out to the search pattern, flip it off to the line, do their search, unclip it, ride it back to shore. It saves them from expending a lot of extra energy, using a lot of extra, extra air unnecessarily. Now like I said, we train all of our divers not only basic scuba and certify them as such, but we also teach them public safety dive training. Now, recreational divers, they get to pick where they go. They go to nice warm places like the Caribbean, nice clear water, they can see where they're going. We have nice clear water in this tank so you guys can see our divers, do what they see what they do. But keep in mind while I'm talking to you that this is what they dive in. This is Mohawk River water. So all the time I'm talking about doing their search patterns, keep in mind that this is what they're used to swimming through. They don't see anything before they find it, they do everything by feel, and uh, it's, not, it's not very nice. But, I did talk to Josh, this is the last show, he did agree to drink this before we left. <laughs> Alright? You want to do it now or you want to wait? You want to, are you going to do it? Really? I got, a, I got a smaller one for you. You sure? Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't drink that. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Well, grow hair. Give that to Kevin Connor. All right. Now we're going to do a, uh, a simple evidence dive. You got a weapon they can search for? How about a knife? You got a knife up there to do the search with? What is that? That's not a knife. That's not a knife. That's not gonna cut it. All right, so there's a knife. All right, let's get that in there. There's our murder weapon. Now there's a couple different ways we can search for this. The diver can take a line out with a weight on each end and spread it out across the bottom. He uses that line as a guide for his search pattern. He swims up and down the line, he moves the weight at each end every time he comes to it, kind of makes his way across the bottom. Or, in this case, Neil is going to use a metal detector. He'll metal detect the bottom of this until he locates the knife. Now he's going to want to recover this knife in a fashion that he's going to want to preserve any of the evidence that's on there. All right. Talking. What? Oh, you found it? Very excited about it. Nailed it. Good job. We kind of knew it was there, by the way. 
So when he recovers this, he's going to keep in mind that he's going to want to preserve any evidence that's on this knife. Now, what might be on the knife you want to preserve? Blood, fingerprints, right? Blood, DNA. Okay. Hey, Neil. Neil. That's not a beer mug. Really. No, I know you used it last night, but it's not what you weren't supposed to. And it's empty. So if you watch him, he's going to scoop this knife up in a fashion he's not going to touch it a whole lot. He'd be wearing gloves anyway, but we don't want to disturb any evidence that's on there. So he'll scoop it up into our evidence container. He's going to seal it inside. What else is going to be sealed in there with it? The water, right? Why do we need the water in there? What happens to metal objects when you take them out of the water? They rust. They rust very quickly. That rust has a potential to ruin any evidence that's on that knife. So he'll take that whole package up. He'll hand it off to the evidence technician at the top. The evidence technician will take it into the lab, process the knife at a later time, and then send us back the container. All right, well done. Neil, you got such a good fare. You've done such a good job. You get a treat. All right. So now, what? That's an apple. You don't want the apple. Why don't you want the apple? It, you don't want the apple? You want me to peel the apple? I'm not peeling the apple. Oh, you want a banana? That's what you want. Get pretty thick. You know that? Alright. It's like a prima donna. It's like the, it's like the canine guys. Good thing they're gone. All right. Now our team makeup. We have 65 divers spread out across the state on eight different teams. Each troop team has a team leader signed full time to administer and operate that team. Every other diver that's assigned to that team is on an on-call basis. They're assigned to patrol duties and administrative duties, but they're on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. That means when Thanksgiving dinner comes around and they're ready to sit down and eat, Christmas morning with their kids and on their birthdays, when their phone rings, we've got a dive detail, they're gone and they show up. And that's their job. Now we went through a name change this summer. We were at New York State Police Scuba. As I mentioned before, Scuba is just one piece of equipment that we use on our team. <laughs> Why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta do that? You know, I, I saw your overtime slips, right? Keep that in mind. There you go. That's better. Yeah. That's better. Good comeback. Now, like I said, our underwater recovery team does a lot of other duties other than underwater recovery. We also do swift water rescue, flood water evacuation and rescues. Use our swift water rescue boats, which we're right over here. We also support the other teams within special operations. The SORT unit, the K-9, BDU, these guys get a mission, they go on or over the water, they call us, we make sure that they can complete their mission. We're gonna, we're gonna switch gears a little bit. We're gonna show you how we lift a larger item off the bottom, something that the diver can't just pick up and carry up. In this case, this is our stolen ATV. We're gonna use a couple different pieces of equipment. One of those being surface supplied air. Now you might say, well surface supplied air, that's what I mentioned, that we used back in 1932, or we're going back in time. Well, if you watch Greg Ebro get dressed up here, you can see that our surface supply system has come a long way, and we're a little bit more technologically advanced now. It also affords us some advantages. Let's see if Neil can get this ATV in place for us. Get that thing started. Turn the key. There you go. It's always a simple thing. That right there is his favorite part of the show. Now, surface slide air gives us certain advantages. One being that we can send the diver an unlimited supply of air. When we're doing more dangerous dive operations such as lifting, like we're going to do here, or for an overhead condition such as ice, or caves, or shipwrecks, things like that, 
It affords us some protection. You can see the helmet on his head, protects his head from any anything that might fall back down on him or any time he comes up under the ice. The other thing it does for us is it gives us the ability to talk to the diver. We have communications. There's a hardwired communication with his, within his umbilical. If you look over here, you see two scuba tanks. Those tanks are hooked to that orange box. The air comes out of those tanks, it goes into that box, it goes through a regulator, comes out the other side into that yellow hose, and that yellow hose is part of his umbilical that goes up to the top, and that's what Greg is breathing out of. Now Josh Cross just splashed. He's in there with scuba gear. You can see another piece of equipment that he's wearing. That's a full face regulator that he has on. That's something that we wear uh, as public safety divers in conjunction with dry suits so that we can fully encapsulate our diver. In other words, they go in in a dry suit, full face mask, and contaminated water. When they come out, they can be decontaminated and they come out completely dry. He's also got a piece of equipment in his hand you might think is a flashlight. It's actually an underwater handheld sonar device. That's how he's going to locate our ATV. Now this sonar device emits a sonar signal through the water. It bounces off of any target down there. And it comes back and he'll hear a tone in his headset. When he hears that tone, he'll swim toward that target. Remember the water that he's swimming through? He's not going to be able to see it. He's just going to swim toward it until he runs into it. Just like that. And that's how we usually find things. So he's going to secure that sonar device and he's going, to, he's going to deploy a Pelican marker device to mark that ATV. Now this is something a diver carries so that when he finds something he can mark it so we don't have to look for it again. He's going to tie one end to the ATV, he's going to send the float end up top. And in this case, Greg is going to use that as a marker to find Josh and the ATV because he's going to go down and give him a hand lifting this. enters the water, you can see Neil up top becomes his tender, and he's going to lower him slowly to the bottom by the use of his umbilical. Greg's not wearing fins. That's the way we would usually deploy a surface supply diver in this situation. It gives him one less thing to snag on, one less thing to drop something on. So He was also carrying two lift bags. Now this ATV weighs between 80 and 90 pounds. Each lift bag one lift bag has 60 pounds of lift when it's full of air, the other one has 50 pounds of lift. When they attach these to the ATV like they're doing now, we're going to fill them with air. That air should overcome the weight of the ATV and take it to the surface. Now we have to get some air down to them. We're going to do that in a way, there's a black hose that actually goes through this umbilical that I'm going to send down to the diver. So he'll use these bubbles coming out of this black hose to fill these lift bags. Good thing this is the last show. These guys have been here way too long. The bubbles are going to their head. You can see the air going into the lift bags. He's going to want to lift these as evenly as possible so that this ATV goes up through the, through the water column as evenly as possible. Again, this ATV is a piece of evidence. So we're going to want to treat it as such. There goes the back. There goes the front. And there we go. Now this technique would work This technique would work on anything that we were lifting. That could be a safe, that could be a car, it could be a boat. Uh, we could have a train down there for all we care. We just keep taking different equipment down. The lift bags come in different sizes. They come in 500, 1,000, 2,000 pounds. That's not enough. We simply take more lift bags down and add them until they overcome the weight of the vehicle we're picking up. Uh, Greg's got one more trick up his sleeve. We take a look at the bottom of our brand new tank that was specifically de designed and built for us here at the brand new exhibit. 
It holds just shy of 9,000 gallons of water. And there it is, all right. All right, well done. Well done. <laughs> Set up there, mate. Major, you set? I'm good. Neil, yeah, we good? All right. Nope, Greg, you stay down at the bottom of that tank. Now, we in our last show here have something unprecedented in New York State Police history. Greg has completed 25 years of service. This is our Major, Major Phil Ruggi is entering the tank in full pack and is about to present Greg with his 25 year certificate underwater for the first time ever. Okay, sit down, you can keep it. All right, congratulations to Craig. Thanks to the Major. We appreciate that. We just made history. So I'm going to speak for our divers, but I'll speak for everybody here at Special Operations. We appreciate all of your attendance for the entire fair. Um, we certainly like seeing you guys every year. We have fun out here. We try to have fun with you guys. We hope we make it entertaining for you. But when these guys are out in the field, they do a serious job. It's a dangerous job. They do it all year long, year round. Like I said, on call. Uh, they recover evidence that put criminals away and they recover loved ones for their families. And I'd just like to give them a round of applause for the hard work that they do year round. All right. Now, you guys want to play some tic-tac-toe with the divers one last time? All right. You guys want to line up right up here at the end of the tank? In an orderly fashion, single file. Don't crowd the tank. Don't don't run. Stay in one line. Don't bunt. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> Everybody else, thank you for your attention. Again, for the entire fair, thanks for coming. Before you leave, take a look at all of our exhibits around here. The sort repelling demonstration. The last one of the fair is coming up at six o'clock. Got some great seats. See the last show of the fair and have a great night. Thank you very much.